Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Primesberger, editor of eWeek. Thank you for joining us today for this latest segment of eWeek eSpeaks. It's a series of IT conversations, very informal, uh, with IT thought leaders from every corner of the business. Today, we're talking to Nicholas Kimla. Nicholas is CEO and founder of Pipeliner CRM. There's a lot of CRM companies out there. Nicholas, how do you guys stand apart? And welcome to eSpeaks. Well, thank you for having me on the show. So I'm, I'm delighted. Uh, uh, thank you. So I, I, I think the, the, the critical thing on CRM is if you want to be a real CRM solution or you want to be a point solution. If you want to be a real CRM that is really covering, especially when you meet market or enterprise area, it's a long way to go. It's a very long way to go. This is not working in three, four years. Everybody who is telling you that is, is basically telling you a, a fake story, fake news, yeah? Mm -hmm. Because uh, CRM is very complex or today. It's the heart of a company. The lead management, activity management, account management, or opportunity management, reporting, and statistics, import, export, but uh, we, can, we could talk about that agents, yeah? Oh. Um, uh, and, and therefore, we have a long road behind us, a very long road behind us. Okay. Tell me, uh, Nicholas, uh, about your, a little bit about your background. Um, I know that you, you came to the United States um, with, some, with a good experience that you want to tell us about, perhaps, um, that gave you the confidence to come to the United States and start this company. What was that? Yeah, thanks, thanks, Chris, for, for asking that. So originally, you probably figured it out. I'm not a native, uh, but my son is uh, always complaining right now. <laughs> I'm not speaking really English, no. But mm -hmm. uh, the point is, I'm originally from Austria, Vienna, and came nine years ago. Uh, and when we uh, had in mind to go to the United States, I wanted to be confident that I can really uh, stand up against the big ones. and. That came out of our experience with my team or when we created a banking compliance solution that was acquired by Thomson Reuters. And we were from the beginning to the end, the technical company to design everything, run the data centers and everything. And so we were knowing what we were doing. That gave me the confidence. And it was poor coincidence, poor coincidence that I was running into CRM because I was invited by IBM International by conference and someone was speaking about pipeline management. And I walked up uh, to the guy after the conference and I asked him, you sold me, this is cool. I can use that for my company. And he said to me, uh, okay. And I said, well, what I saw three days, this is perfect. And he said, what you saw was an Excel file. And I said, oh my goodness. But then my entrepreneurial mind immediately started running and like crazy and then i said okay what is if i take this file and make a software out of it he said fine not knowing at that time what kind of implication that for me has yeah and for my team yeah because we were just then sort of looking how we can make crm and then we were for almost eight nine months investigating what kind of crm systems out there what are the strengths the weaknesses and then we had also an interview of almost thousand people where we just asked them why they all say we don't like CRM. It almost sucks. Yeah? And then I said, wow, this is a business opportunity. And so we created a different approach. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned you're from Vienna. Uh, I, I can identify with that. My, my people are originally from Salzburg, a little further west, I think of. Beautiful city. Of, Sound of, of music. <laughs> Vienna, yes, for sure. So I, I can uh, I can uh, identify with you that way, um, and now you're down in Los Angeles with this company, and that's what you're doing. What what is it, Nicholas, that sets Pipeliner apart from uh, some of the the other CRMs? And I'm thinking Salesforce and uh, you know Workday and a few others. Well, the point is, as 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 we said uh, when we were interviewing the people, we realized uh, that the systems are, and I have to give really a lot of credit to our to Mark Benioff that he brought our, everything into the cloud. But the point was, it was a top-down approach. It was basically how you create a system, uh, for management, and then the people should use it. It was not the user at the beginning in mind. 
And when you create something like that, you have to have a bottom up approach. And then we realize, OK, what is that? This is the salesperson. He should have a benefit. And salespeople are very visual people. Yeah? They are very visual. Yeah? It's one of the core strengths of the salesperson. And so I, I, I realized, OK, when I do that, then I have to come up with a different approach. And the approach was really bottom up approach. It means first serve and help the sales or rap to give them a really tools that they like. And so you don't have to convince someone when he likes something to use it. When you like it, you use it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and therefore I created our out of their mindset are that salespeople are different, yeah? are a different solution in, in form of visualization with the most visual CRM besides other things in the industry. Why? Because it is visual. You like what when, when you not only have dashboards, yeah? people say yeah, this is not the whole application has to be visual. Yeah? And so I, I even created a term for that. I call salespeople salespreneurs because a salesperson is an entrepreneur in an enterprise. It's an entrepreneurial approach. Salespeople are entrepreneurs. They are not totally entrepreneurs because they have a product that they sell. So they're not investing money into the product and in the distribution channel, but they live by commission and some have only a very small base salary and a high commission. So for some, it's a, it's a high risk and on, on a monthly basis, yeah? And, and, and I was heavily influenced by the people behind me, by the Austrians, or the Austrian School of Economics. And one of the guys, I don't know if you can see them, he is the founder, uh, Karl Menger, and, and uh, Ludwig von Mises and Hayek, they always said, sales has uh, a component that has a uh, peace in itself. Because you see, when you sell, you create a value. And the value is that you are not are creating war. Yeah? This is why we speak about trade wars, Yeah, right. how bad that is. So salespeople creating that. And so I created the term that I see salespeople are really wealth creator and peace producer. And give them the tool that they love to use. And then they, when they like it, the tool, they get more efficient in their work. And that leads to productivity because productivity comes only when you're efficient. Yeah, absolutely. So does this mean, um, Nicholas, that this uh, application is configurable by the user? Um, for yes. example, because, um, you know, the first thing I do when I get a new tool, uh, like a new content management system or something else that I have to use to publish articles, I try to find all the shortcuts I can because that's going to help me get more productive. Is that right. something that you can do with uh, with Pipeliner? Yeah, very similar. So our, we, we think people are different. This is our approach. Every human being is a little bit different. Yeah, especially we Austrians are very different. <laughs> no, we are really, <laughs> we, yeah. are rela we are more relational. Yeah, but the point is um, out of that are the, 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 the difference is that people think differently and therefore we give for each user for each entity like lead, opportunity, account, contact, different views. Maybe you are list point, yeah, list point. Maybe you are more visual mapping point. Maybe you want to have it in bubble charts. Maybe you want to have it in the process chart. So we give you every time a different view out of your preference. And then you can make the data also, the, the, the snapshot of data are also customizing for you. So we give you constantly the option, if you want that, to customize to your need, because people are different. We, we, we don't fit. Look at this. Or when you, whatever we wear, every person looks not the same. Even we shop sometimes in the same, uh, in the same brands, but we are not wearing exactly the same. No, oh, absolutely. Uh, okay, great. Tell me about who are some of the, the, your clients that, that buy you right now, or at least uh, kind of the... Um, the verticals that they're in. What are there particularly? Uh, yeah, we have uh, success, vertical strengths. Successful verticals that are buying you more than others. Yes, very good question. Definitely, are we are definitely very successful in manufacture area, are and definitely in their in the insurance financing industry. Yeah, insurance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brilliant. And and uh, we have very good and beautiful 
our, our experiences there and, and, our, and definitely many other industries, but our, this is our, where we're really doing very well in the manufacturing area. And why? Because their more decent sales are older, decent is not the right word, older structures of, of, of in the manufacturing area. They have older structures. Mm -hmm. and so there is the people they immediately want when they jump into sales, they want something that is easy, that's not mm -hmm. too complicated. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the the uh, the old image of the red easy button by Staples always comes up with me. It's like <laughs> you want that you want that red easy button, you know, yeah, to yeah, be able yeah. to push. Um, so, Nicholas, we have just a couple minutes left. Can you tell me about um, maybe a trend or two you're seeing in this business? Maybe a feature that you know, your customers are asking for that you're working on, or some other general trend? Yeah, I, 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 I would pick up two trends that I strongly believe they are very important. The one is really around education. Yeah? I, I strongly believe we are in the biggest transformation that it happens today. It's not only our uh, what, what, what's going on in, in regard of our um, the, the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I got my shot yes or two days ago. Uh, uh, Johnson Johnson. Yeah, one shot done everything. It was perfect organized. But the point is. Uh, the future is about tools. You need the right tool yeah? and you need the right skills. If you have not the skills to use the tool, you're not getting efficient. And I think we overemphasize a little bit our, when we speak about soft skills, that this is our, a skill that is highly important, but soft skill is part of the skills. It's important. Why? Because people want to connect right now technology should take away the burden of repetitive task yeah that should take away that we can talk that we can interact that we can do something and the second trend that i strongly believe is about anything about data and analytics why look at the chaos that we have right now around the world and not only here it's everywhere on the data of the pandemic do you really know who is a covid that person who and that brings what? It brings mistrust in the data. And when you have mistrust, you make a decision and you want that the people coming behind you, but you're not trusting the data, then your strategy that you want to execute is not really there. So the point is, um, you have to have accurate data. How you get accurate data? It's not so complicated and we make passwords uh, that uh, a little bit bring people in some more sophisticated area yeah but at the end salespeople are simple thinking and also the management has to talk to the salespeople in a way that they can relate to each other if he comes out and say oh we need this prescriptive and descriptive analytics what is that all think about our what happened is what it's a poor descriptive analytic it's about lagging indicators looking backwards yeah very simple but we make a beautiful our uh, acronym or whatever yeah, that it looks but what happened is important and why did it happen why did it happen is a diagnostic analytic it's it's easy and, and 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 it gives you the analytics but the analytics should be so simple that you understand oh yes that's cool lagging is looking back leading is looking forward yeah you have two indicators yeah they are very important how much yeah. I was winning, how much I was losing. Uh, uh, what is what could be maybe in some form predictive? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what 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 should happen? Yeah, mm -hmm. well, and I think that is the future. Yeah, I think you're right. And Nicholas, sorry, we're just about out of time. So, oh. wait, listen. Thank you so much for the overview of the company and what you guys are doing. I think we might need to come back and revisit with you. Um, that would be nice. I think we just I, touched. I I think we just touched on a few key points here, and I think we can go deeper. So we're, we're going to do that, I think. Nicholas Kimla, who is the CEO and founder of Pipeliner CRM, I want to thank you very much for your time you. this morning. Thank you for being. Okay, and for everybody following along to the end here, thank you very much, and have a great rest of your eWeek. Thanks for joining us on eWeek eSpeaks. Go to eWeek.com to hear more conversations with IT thought leaders.